Okay, we're at Western Iowa Tech today in our motorcycle and power sports technology lab, and Dalton here is going to uh, help me test one of these automatic uh, chokes, or they call it an auto buy starter. Uh, a couple different terms out there. <coughs> We've taken this one off, one of these Taiwan uh, imports, which a million of these out there have these. And the problem is, you don't have any service manuals. So. Uh, what we've done that seems to work pretty well is we use a combination between uh, Yamaha and Honda service manuals where these were used quite often and we, what we found is some real comparable specifications that we feel we can use. The other thing is, uh, to tell you the truth, I don't, know, I don't remember where I saw this or whatnot, but one, it maybe it's a service manual or something else, I came up with a, a way to actually measure the, and can you zoom in on this Chris? We're going to measure this cold or room temperature height and what happens is we're going to put voltage through here we're going to put 12 volts directly off a jumper battery here and, and both service manuals we found from the metric world said to let it sit for five minutes and what happens is this will uh, melt in here there's like a wax in here and that's going to actually take this extend it down so you can imagine that there's a fuel jet underneath here and when this is all the way up when the vehicle's at room temperature when you first start the vehicle you know, you're going to have fuel that's going to come through here. As it heats up, this is slowly going to come down, block off that jet, and then hopefully the engine is up to operating temp by then. Does that make sense? So uh, that's why I like to get a real good measure, uh, measurement beforehand, see what I have, and then once I have this sitting for a few minutes, I can go back and get uh, an after measurement. Now, we already went ahead and tested this a little bit ago, and we saw that this thing would grow about a hundred thousandths in, in just about a minute. So. Um, we felt pretty good about but we're going to show you the test procedure so Dalton's going to start out and he's just going to do an everyday uh, resistance test with an ohm meter so he's going to test his meter to itself make sure that the meter uh, has good continuity now what we found from Honda is Honda said 8 to 12 ohms of resistance and then on this Yamaha one that I just found I saw that it said a maximum or I'm sorry I take that back Yamaha was 8 to 12 ohms of resistance at room temperature and Honda said maximum of 10. So uh, we'll go ahead and test this, see what we come up with. We'll go to the green. We're getting about, eh, we got 7.5, 7.6, 7.4, something like that. So uh, we have continuity. If we had nothing there, what would we have? An open. Okay, we'd have an open circuit, and it would automatically tell us that this is no good. So now we're going to go to what... Um, one of the manuals said to uh, do, the Honda manual, said to actually go ahead and put voltage to this and wait five minutes. And one of the things that they do is they have you have this installed on the vehicle. So you can't even see the jet here. You're going to have this installed on the vehicle, and they tell you to put pressure through the fuel tube, through the fuel circuit. And if there's a restriction after that five minutes, that's good. If there's no restriction, what's that tell you? You can use a Mighty Vac. You could put PSI into there. This is supposed to, when it's warmed up, it's supposed to actually plug it off. So if you put pressure into that port, you should have PSI that's able to be built. If you could just blow right on through, it tells you that this isn't shutting. Does that make sense? So that's another way you could do it on the vehicle, which is a nice test when you think about having to take this off. On this particular one, you'd still have to take an air box off. It'd still be a pain in the butt. So um, we're going to go ahead and do this. Uh, one of the things we're going to do, uh, it doesn't matter on continuity of this. So we're going to go off that green wire. We're going to go to ground. Let me get our meter out of the way here. And if you can uh, maybe get a little closer there. We've really gotten in the habit, especially when you're going directly off a battery here, if you don't know if there's a problem in the circuit or whatnot, to use at least one of the leads to be fused. So it's kind of just, you know, you do something a million times uh, one way. It's kind of hard. Normally, we just got a couple of jumpers. And, per, and think about this. Now, per the manual, it doesn't tell us to use a fused jumper. It literally actually shows on the manual you taking uh, these two leads and going right directly to a battery. All we're saying here is by using this uh, fused jumper, if there is a problem, if there is a short we touch anything, we're going to be able to pop the fuse in there. We're just going to be a little bit safer. Sound good? So we'll go off... Uh, positive on that one. Like I said, it doesn't matter. You can go to that yellow wire. Okay. Then we're going to go directly to the negative here. Now we should be, uh, this thing should start to get hot here. And what we've done is we've also taken a temp gun where we can actually measure this. Now we know that before we started, like the top of this table, 68 degrees, 70 degrees or so. So as this is sitting here, like we said for this five minutes, 
to make sure we got a good connection there. It's kind of hard with that bigger one. <coughs> and it's getting warm. Go ahead and touch that. The very tip. It's getting pretty dang warm, isn't it? Now, if I go ahead and measure this, I'm 87 degrees already. Okay? We started out at our bench measurement when this was cold. Uh, we just went ahead and went from a nice flat surface to the base here, and we were 550 thousandths at room temperature. Go ahead and measure that now. We are we are 95 degrees now. We went from 70 degrees, 95 degrees in what, 30 seconds? So, a hundred thousandths in just a little bit of time. Would you agree with me that this uh, this choke or this auto buy starter is uh, working perfectly fine? Okay. The only other possibility on this, I'm going to go ahead and disconnect our circuit. Um, we know that we're good here. We've done a good job of being safe. The only other thing is that this is a jet. It's a it's a needle in here, right? You guys can see that. And at the bottom of this, Chris, can you kind of zoom in here? Well, this is really hot. Hot to the touch here. This, uh, this little plate, if you will, that actually it acts as the, the stop for the fuel. So when that goes down on the carburetor, that has to block or seat that port, if you will. If that's chipped away or bad or missing or damaged or there's debris, it's going to allow fuel to leak on paths. That makes sense? And the vehicle's going to run rich. So when you're rebuilding the carburetor, you got to pay, uh, pay real close attention to the actual seat down on the carburetor. It isn't something so simple where you go, oh, no problems, and start looking for a different thing that's causing you to be rich. Um, if this thing, for some reason, stuck in the down position, what would the customer's complaint be? Hard starting, and if it's if it does not work and it stays open, what's the customer's complaint going to be? High idle, rich, High idle, rich fallen plug, uh, slow performance, um, uh, blah blah blah. Right? Okay. Any questions? All right. That's how you test one of these uh, automatic uh, starters for all your Taiwan, Yamaha, Honda, whoever uses one. They're all done the same.